Megan and Afraid, the season finale. Woo! This cold air feels good on my ass. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to day three of my camping trip. You guys have to let me know how you like this, whether doing a video for each day is better or just doing one big video that contains the whole thing. I figured I'd try something different this time. You guys have to let me know what you think. Oh, I got my coffee. Had raccoons come in last night and do dishes for me. I, I had a pan that had some butter in it. And it started raining, and I didn't feel like washing my pan in the rain, so I left it sitting on a rock. And uh, raccoons came in and cleaned it out in the middle of the night. <laughs> Good for them. So they got a little treat. Yeah, it rained for almost 10 hours yesterday. Hopefully it doesn't do any more today. It looks overcast from what I can see. I can't tell if it's actual overcast or if it's just so early and the sun hadn't come up yet. <sighs> Hopefully today we find something to do. Uh, I'm going to do a little riding, actually tomorrow, before I leave. And I'll put that at the end of this video. So us leaving will be at the end of this video, so we don't have a fourth video with just us packing up. Because I've got another guy coming out tonight, another person who found me on YouTube. And Jeremy texted me this morning saying he might come out. He's more of a fair weather adventurer. So, weather's good enough, Jeremy might come out. Don't want him to get wet, can't shrink anymore. Won't be nothing left of him. I don't know what we're gonna do for food. We were supposed to grill out steaks and stuff tonight, but all the firewood is just absolutely soaked, so I don't know what we're gonna do. I've got my little frying pan, but it's small. You guys saw that on day one. So, we'll see how everything unfolds get busy around camp and get up and at them. Well, you never know what kind of treasures you'll find out here. I found an unopened can of Coors Light. Who knows how long this thing's been laying half buried in the dirt. So we'll go ahead and dispose of that. Well, it is now 8 a.m. and it has started raining again. So I've retreated back into the tent. And the tent, I have to say, is doing great. Uh, I haven't gotten wet in here. Some water has come in uh, because I keep the awning open during the day even when it's raining. I have to put something on it to kind of guide the water off of it or it'll pour in right here. But the rest of it's doing fine. I get some water around these little loops here. Like that one just dripped on me. Uh, but other than that, it's doing good. This space here is meant for parking your motorcycle. Uh, it's, it's a moto camping tent. But I, do, I didn't buy it for that. I bought it for what I'm doing right now. So if the weather turns bad, I've got some place to retreat into. And I'm out of it. I'm perfectly fine right here. I'm not exposed to the elements. Where my little one-man tent, that, I, this was impossible. Um, so that's why I bought this tent. was for this big vestibule area. So I can keep all of my stuff in here and have my own little living space if the weather turns sour, which it has. So, yeah, this has performed really well, this camping trip. And I, even though it kind of sucks that it's raining, uh, I, I wanted 
this to happen so I could test this tent. Because I put all my stuff through through the ringer just to make sure it, it works the way it's supposed to. And so far this is doing great. I brought a can of Pringles. But when the bear bag fell, now I've got a can full of crumbs. Can't win them all. Goldberg. Well, it is dinner time. Josh showed up and he brought a couple of steaks, so I'm not eating stuff out of the creek today. How's yours? It's excellent. Good. Got a fire going. I was able to rip down some pine trees. We cut them up. They were dead. Don't none of you tree huggers bitch at me. All the wood, wood that I had collected was already waterlogged. So. Uh, I found some pines that were standing upright but dead and pulled them down. And they burned up pretty good. So I gotta thank him for the steaks. He brought these out and cooked them. So thank you for that. You've been out here long enough, you deserve it. You tell him about the bear we saw? Yeah. Last weekend? He was with me when I saw that big ass bear I was talking about earlier in the video. I said, I bet he was waist high on all fours. Yeah, he was. So I'm guessing he was over six foot if he stood on his back leg. Probably was. So that's, that's the biggest black bear I've ever seen out here. Well, Josh has got a Royal Enfield too, and that's how you found me, isn't it? It is. Found you on YouTube just looking up videos. And you bought this at the same place I bought mine which is Gearhead Junction down in Harrisburg. I did. So what do you think of it? I like it. It's a good bike. Um, I like how it carries its weight low. Um, and the seat height is low. So it, it just handles really well. I, I know it's heavy, but it, you don't feel it when you ride it. You really don't. I've had some, I've had two KLR 650s over the years and, and they're great bikes too, but they, they tend to carry the weight very high compared to, to this. And the seat height's higher too, so if you get in a sticky situation where you have to put your legs down, it's easy on this. Yeah, I had a Gen 1 KLR, a 1991 model, and it was, it was a horse to yeah. get on that bike. It was a big bike. I liked it. It was a good bike. I, I do prefer it. These days. I had an 08 and a 13, which was the, a later body, and uh, good bikes. But this... I like because it, it has these front racks on it. It's got a little bit more on it than the KLR. Not that you can't put them on there, but this thing comes with it. Center stand for chain maintenance and everything like that works works really well. Um, I had a center stand on my KLR, but there again, had to buy all that extra. I had the KLR. It's a good bike. I don't have anything against the KLR. Uh, but I think this is a more versatile bike out of the crate. By far. Right off the showroom floor, this is more versatile gas tank's four gallons, but the fuel mileage that it gets, it, it'll go anywhere I need it to. And then it has the fuel gauge too, which is, is awesome. Um, I How's love it? having fuel gauge and I love having the gear indicator. How's your compass work? The compass does not work. <laughs> <laughs> mine, has, mine hasn't worked from day one. Well, I think I figured out that my motion light is light sensitive as well as motion sensitive. That thing was 18 bucks off Amazon. I didn't get like instructions or anything like that, so I don't know. In fact, this is the second one I've had because I sent the first one back thinking it was a broke. Because if I try to test it, like when it's light out, it don't work. Nothing happens. 
but it works when it's dark. It works like it's supposed to. Well, it is early morning and it's the last day here. Josh is going to go ahead and take off and I'm going to break everything down. So, nice meeting you. It's always cool to get to meet new people and go camping, go riding, things like that. So that was cool. He lives about 45 miles south of me. And he, like I said, he actually bought his bike the same place we, I did. And so we, we hooked up through YouTube and the dealer that we got connected that way. So we'll see him again, I'm sure. A little brisk this morning. It got cold last night, relatively. Got down in the 50s Fahrenheit, which seems cold after it's been 100 degrees. So. I'm gonna take my time tearing everything down because I gotta do more cleaning on the tent. It's just covered with mud splatter. So we'll get that taken care of and we'll get out of here. Let's get to it. Mm -hmm. 